This week on The Communicators, Representative Mary Bono Mack talks about the theft of millions of consumers' personal data through computer hacking into Sony's PlayStation network and what she'd like to see government do to protect consumers. Congresswoman Mary Bono Mack, one of your key questions yesterday at the Sony data breach hearing was, why weren't Sony customers told earlier? Are you satisfied with the answer that Sony provided? Not yet. And, and I think Sony, of course, has some legitimate concerns and questions. But uh, for me, as a policymaker and a, and a consumer also, I think a consumer always should be alerted first and foremost on any data breach like this because only they know what data might have been exposed. So, um, you know, I think if Sony would have come forward and come out uh, and testified at the hearing, we could have gotten a lot of answers that uh, would have been very helpful. Uh, frustrated, concerned, we'll follow this, we'll see why they say the consumers didn't have the right to be informed immediately, see if there's a legitimate reason that they actively were still protecting consumers by their actions or if they were sort of creating greater jeopardy for their consumers. Now the fact that Sony provided written answers, was that satisfactory? I mean, if you get asked to testify at a hearing by Congress, chances are you're going to come, correct? Well, you would hope, and again, I, I can understand Sony's concern that they would be uh, scrutinized very heavily and, and have some pointed, tough questions that members would have asked. Uh, with, you know, reading the answers, though, there's still more questions that come out of their, you know, the answers that they provided to us that I think we need to continue to pursue. And again, recognizing, you know, Sony has some speculation about what happened, and they are contending that they are victims here. But uh, there, there is a two-tier victimization process here. There's the Sony uh, side, and then there are the 100 million uh, consumers who are also potential victims here. So the, uh, you know, the, the, the letter is a well-worded letter and, and quite detailed, but it still presents a lot more questions than it does answers. Um, in fact, the uh, chairman of the board of directors of Sony USA wrote this to you. I hope you can appreciate the extraordinary nature of the events the company was facing, brought on by a criminal hacker whose activity was neither immediately nor easily accessible. I believe that after you review all the facts, you will agree that the company has been acting in good faith to release reliable information in accordance with its legal and ethical responsibilities to its valued customers. Do you agree that the company has been acting in good faith? On their behalf, but again, if the consumer, now remember the, the way in which Sony notified their customers was by a, a blog post. So it was a passive communication out to the consumers rather than an active, hey, everybody let you know what happened here. But only the consumer might, you know, something as simple as, oh, I use that password that I use for everything, and somebody just hacked into it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people might think, oh, gosh, they have my records now. In my view, I feel safer because Sony let me know this happened immediately. So the questions that, that all come out of this, and, and the, the letter is a very long worded, uh, you know, what did you know and when did you know it? But for me, when Sony says, we were protecting the consumers, again, the consumer might want to know, wait a minute. You know, I too have the right to protect myself, and all I'm asking, and, and all I'm saying as a policymaker is, should they know sooner? Should they be required, or should they do their best to notify, uh, given the consumer's idea of, of how they would protect themselves, rather than Sony being the deciderer of uh, how they're going to protect their consumers? Representative Mary Bono Mack is the chairman of the Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Commerce, Manufacturing, and Trade. She's our guest on the Communicators. Also joining us. Juliana Grunwald, a tech and telecom writer for the National Journal. Hi, Congresswoman. Hi. So what type of notification should they have made instead of just posting it on a blog post, requiring their users to seek the information themselves? What would you have liked them to have done? Well, of course I would have liked, uh, to me it seems that they could have let people know a little bit sooner. They contend and others will contend that there's a, there's a timeline that they need to allow law enforcement to come in and for them to do their forensic analysis on what actually happened. But you also have to ask yourself, does in fact, by giving them a lengthy time period, put more people in harm's way? So I don't know that I can identify a specific time or specific manner, but I can, I can speak to the, the voices of the consumer who are saying, wait a minute, I have a right to know as soon as possible as well. You know, in this day and age, and I just said passive versus active notification, 
Uh, not too many people would spend the time, perhaps if they're not logging on or gaming, to go to a blog post. But if they get an email, it, it, chances are they're going to get that email at a, in a much more timely manner. And then they can make the decision. Again, I'm, I'm using this as an oversimplification. But if they simply say, holy cow, I've used the same one password for everything, and, and there sh therefore I can spend the rest of the day changing my password. That's, a, again, an over, oversimplification, but it's an example of, of why these questions are very important and the answers that we try to get out of them. And I honestly don't know that there's going to be one set answer. This data breach is just one in many, a string of data breaches in you know, recent years, uh, including you know, last month one by Epsilon, which is a major provider of email services for numerous companies. You know, some 40 states have passed data breach laws. This is not a new issue. Why do you think Congress hasn't acted yet? Well, first of all, it's a growing issue. And when you think back to you know, 2005 or you know, a handful of years ago, the data breaches were smaller and a little bit, sometimes they involved hardware. They would steal the whole laptop or they'd steal a hard drive. Remember the cases years ago of, of hard drives going missing from our nuclear laboratories. Data breach is, is taking on a whole new role, but these are somewhat silent crimes for many people. And even as a lawmaker, uh, you don't hear about this until it's too late. And nobody knows how awful it is to have your personal identification hijacked and, and used for dubious purposes until it's actually happened. So I think uh, if, this, if the Sony uh, case with these hundreds of millions of records, this hundred million records being out there and being potentially breached in harm, I think lawmakers could hear from people and hear what a nuisance it is, and then they would be a lot more actively engaged in, in the issue. Are consumers adequately outraged? I mean, people are still giving, handing over their personal data to, to, to these companies. I mean, do you think that that's maybe been a, a, that consumers just haven't gotten worked up enough about it? Well, and that's a great question, and I think it kind of goes to the whole internet experience. You know, we, we believe that when we are asked for our information that there's reasonable protection in place. And it's, but it's getting to the point when you hit the anarchy, you're crossing your fingers at the same time, and that's not a good enough policy. We want to believe that, that those people who are asking for information take great lengths to safeguard it. Uh, so I don't know, again, if consumers or, or, or constituents are going to be outraged until it's actually happened to them. But these crimes can, can appear long down the road, and, and what's worse about them is they can compile and they can, you know, what people might think that the credit card I used on, on Sony might be compromised, but other data that they might, might have, might have been hacked, can paint a pretty full picture of who you are elsewhere. And so the, the length of the crimes that could be committed, I think, are unknown. Uh, Representative Bonomac, are you considering, or what kind of legislation are you considering when it comes to data breaches? How, how do you approach that? Well, there have been a number of efforts uh, in Congress. Some have been successful getting out of the House. There's been a, a huge, a very good bipartisan effort. Uh, Cliff Stearns from Florida has been a leader on this. Bobby Rush has been a leader on it. We, we want to continue to build on the work that they have done. Um, it, it's always better, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you can sort of, you know, it, it take advantage of other people's work and, and move the ball forward. Again, it's a matter of finding the fine lines. We want to protect the consumer, but also enable um, and enhance e-commerce. I think there's been a very good chord that's been struck between uh, both sides in the Energy and Commerce Committee. So piggyback on that and make sure that uh, we're, we're doing our best to protect consumers yet uh, not get in the way of e-commerce. Would you see, could you foresee federal requirements for e-commerce companies such as Sony? Well, I think the, the question would be federal requirements in lieu of all of the patchwork of state requirements. And many, and I believe most, would argue that that will simplify things to have the one regime, the one uh, set of rules to play by, rather than the patchwork of, of at least 40 some odd states who have, are currently doing it. So the federal role here would be no, probably no greater, and some would say that the state should still have the ability to, uh, to do more if the federal government doesn't do enough. But uh, that would be that would be the approach. Is your approach, Congresswoman, a bipartisan approach? Is there is there partisanship on this issue? Yes, there's terrific bipartisanship on it. And furthermore, with the you know, it would be my goal to get something to Republican House and the Democrat Senate. Uh, but that in itself, if you look at the people on the committee who are engaged in it, who are quite well together, uh, it would be a, I, I anticipate a very good bipartisan product. 
If I'm not mistaken, the, the, the brush bill that mm -hmm. was introduced last year was required security standard, you know, an adequate level of security and notification of, of a data breach. Uh, based on the hearing yesterday, is there anything that you would you know, tweak or have you, you know, is there any concrete ideas that came out of that that you think need to be added to that bill at this point? There were some great comments out of the hearing yesterday, and, and I think on all accounts the hearing was a good one. Uh, the questions that came up to me and not having been really is on the front line of the negotiations before but some of the questions that people are asking now are are new since that bill geolocating for example geo tracking yesterday we had, had testimony justin brookman brought up the fact of you know geo tracking and why it can be good to retain some of that data why it can be you know why people might want to do that so again it it goes to back to the question how Carefully, can you craft this legislation? How can you not um, uh, basically have too broad a, a brush stroke that creates a bunch of unintended consequences? But a lot of great suggestions yesterday, a lot of things that make you have to pause and think and, and consider the, really the consequences of all of the legislation. Do you think it should be it should move on its own, or should it be, should it be part of a broader privacy uh, legislation providing baseline privacy protections? I know that the Senate there's been a bill introduced, and there's been talk of a you know baseline privacy bill in the House. Well, I'd like to see them move separately. I think a lot of the issues are 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 different, yet they sound similar, and quite truthfully, they can get complicated and confusing to talk about. And you realize privacy and protection all sound to be one. The data, breach, uh, the data breach and the data security that we're talking mostly about with Sony is a little bit different than the other privacy issues. And, and they both, again, have far-reaching consequences if you don't consider them carefully. So the reason I would like to see them separate, and, and that doesn't mean they couldn't be joined together, but uh, eventually, and of course, whatever you have to do to pass law, sometimes you have to do. But uh, the, the issues are somewhat um, somewhat different and it's good to look at them in a different light. Uh, Congresswoman, you brought up the uh, geo-tracking, especially when it comes to Apple. Uh, is there a big brother quality in, in private companies having that kind of information about people? Well, there sure can be and that's a great question and, and to me it gets back to what is the consumer, uh, what is the consumer aware of is happening to them and do they have the right to opt in to opt out? And again, for the consumer to understand the implications for themselves. And geo tracking, of course, I think gives everybody just kind of a yuck factor anyway, or, a, you know, a, a, like you're thinking of the guy tracking you around in his trench coat, and there's a little bit of a, a, of a yuck factor, and you can understand the harm, the physical harm, when you think of tracking and geo tracking. Yet, so many of the things that we do and the conveniences we have today are because of geo tracking. We love our GPSs. I mean, I. Just, you know, when my daughter got her first car, I couldn't imagine that she wouldn't have a GPS device where I could push go home and she would find her way home. So we love those convenience, conveniences too. So again, it's to carefully consider that the consumer is empowered with the knowledge of exact, exactly what's happening, how they're protected, and, and if they feel it's something that they want in their lives or not. This is C-SPAN's Communicator Program. Our guest is Representative Mary Bono Max. She is the chairwoman of the Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Commerce, Manufacturing, and Trade. We're talking about the data security breach hearing that was held this week in her subcommittee. Juliana Grunwald with National Journal is our guest reporter. Getting back to the tracking issue, do you have overall any overall concerns about internet tracking? You know, websites tracking you as you go from place to place on the web. I mean, for you know, in order to target ads to you, do you think that that's something that that should be regulated? Do you have you had any thoughts on you know proposals for do not track? You know, is that something Congress should mandate, or should should that be left to the private sector to innovate on? That's a great question, Juliana. I. Uh, I am looking at it and looking at it very closely and again trying to separate out good practices from bad and protect the consumer to make sure that their online experience is a good one and that the data that's being collected on them is something that they know and understand and, and can participate in. Uh, for me, I know that the industries involved and there are quite a few different industri industries, they're all looking at this themselves to make sure that they're not um, overstepping their bounds or recognizing that if they do, Congress is going to come in. Uh, so right now it's asking the questions and, and then letting people understand and, and Congress understanding too that there's a difference between uh, the advertising, how it's delivered, the targeting, the, the targeting that goes on, and again the collection of data. 
uh, you know, it was interesting to, this morning to turn on the news and see that they were reporting polling data from a, a Yahoo uh, search engine that released the demographics of who was searching for uh, bin Laden. And so the data that's collected, it, it, it's interesting and it changes. And with the targeted advertising, uh, the questions are many and the issues are complicated and complex. And yes, we are definitely looking at it. The Federal Trade Commission has said they don't believe self-regulation has worked. They said that in a report they released in December. Uh, do you think, I mean, do you favor Congress passing baseline privacy protections? Is that something your committee is going to work on? Again, we're, we are looking at it and deciding whether Congress needs to act or, or not. And do, you, uh, do you hear from your constituents on the issue of uh, online privacy? Very seldom. Uh, you'd be surprised. What I am enjoying is sort of the other side of that, how our constituency is really moving to the Internet. And they, they love the fact, not that this is a shameless plug here, they love the fact that I'm on Twitter and I'm on Facebook, and they love the fact that they can interact with us that way. So we're hearing more and more from, from our constituents this way, and then I think by that nature, those folks who are on the Internet are more likely to sort of comment on that. The greater whole, um, I am not really hearing a lot from my constituents at this point. Um, your panel uh, has shared jurisdiction on privacy with Greg Walden's subcommittee. Do, do you have a sense of who would take the lead on that issue? Well, uh, probably I would say me. I don't know what Greg would say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would tell you that Greg and I are, are great friends and have been seated together on the Energy and Commerce Committee for many years and uh, we will gladly recognize the boundaries of the subcommittees and the jurisdictions and work together to the very greatest of our ability uh, without any problem or with any with any seams in between in between the two subcommittees. I, my subcommittee has jurisdiction over the Federal, Federal Trade Commission, as you've said, and Greg over the FCC. So the issues would break down along those, those lines. Congresswoman, uh, Epsilon was also invited to yesterday's hearing. They didn't show, nor did they provide written answers. Is that correct? Oh, we do have a letter from Epsilon. Okay, were you satisfied with what Epsilon had to say? Again, a lot of this is somewhat where they're protecting themselves, and I understand that. And a lot of the unknown factor about what's happening and why it's happening. Uh, but I'm not satisfied because we don't really have the answers of how do we move forward and make sure this doesn't happen again and happen uh, continuously and become, you know, basically a, a, an impediment or a barrier that prohibits people from getting online and whether it's shopping online or, or surfing the web for whatever their purposes are. I'm not satisfied because I think the answers are important and this is not to point the fingers again Epsilon and Sony are victims but uh, as well but again we need the answers beyond that on, a, on crafting wise policy and holding their feet to the fires to the fire going back to Sony the in their letter and their response to the Congress you know the uh, steps that they say they've outlined since the breach are common sense greater encryption you know having a, a specialized person to oversee security uh, the four things that they've talked about putting into place one would think they should have done a long time ago especially when you're guarding you know, hundred million customers you think that these basic basic items they would have done long long ago so the questions the answers the testimony for me are about moving us forward in a way that really makes people safer. Well, one of the things I noted in the Sony letter is that, and I think are in your uh, uh, testimony, uh, was that not everyone's credit card was active or they got a hold of everybody's credit card. Well, isn't it sometimes the date of birth and some of the other personal information that that's more dangerous than a credit card? You've asked a very important question, and even Sony cannot say whether or not uh, credit card numbers were, 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 were taken. But all of those other questions, you, it's not too hard to paint a picture of a person in their entirety by ga gathering data. And every bit of data about you paints a greater picture of you. And, you know, the security questions that are asked now, it's, it's worth asking the question, you know, when now you log on and they say, what school did you go to? What was the name of your first pet? You know, you're, you're, you're creating more of a, of a database that is a, is, a, is a you that is out there. So the questions um, are very good and very valid. And, you know, there's a, there's a children's toy that you can get. Um, it, you ask it, don't ask me how, but 20 questions. You think of something in your head, whatever it is, a bread box. And, and the, the gizmo asks you 20 questions, and it will identify that gizmo every time. And I think about that 
when I think about our online safety, on how many questions do you need to have out there in cyberspace before you've created a real person and a real identity that you can, who knows, open a, you know, a mortgage with, a credit card with, whatever it is you want to do, um, get a passport, get identity, you know, those questions. And when it comes to your constituents, have you had constituents contact you and say, my identity has been breached yes. and I need your help? Yes. What is the process like for you as a congresswoman? Well, first of all, I would have one of my caseworkers do uh, their best in, in every congressional office, and this is a good thing to bring up. In every congressional office, we have caseworkers who help with all of this as far as the interface with the federal government. But I can tell you it's a nightmare for people. And the amount of time and effort that is spent for people to clean up their, their identity or their credit history or whatever happens to them, it, it can be just countless hours. And to add that, to take that out of somebody's life, um, it, it is quite a hassle. And sometimes, as you know, it can take a long time or a long time to clear up these things once they're negative. As we move closer and closer and further and further into cloud computing, how does that play a role in security? Well, that question came up yesterday in the hearing, and uh, the FTC contended that it, the cloud, based, you know, depending on where the server was located, didn't change things. But cloud computing is a, it's a, again, it's a great thing. It's a very useful tool, and we should kick around uh, what it means to be based in the cloud. You know, what's interesting now is how many of these services offer, um, like a, 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 a server where you can store all of your data, all of your files. There are even programs where you can have them keep a hold of all of your passwords in one convenient lo you know, place. And you are expecting them to protect you and to protect your data. And I think that's the question, again, that consumers expect uh, based in you know, how much legal weight or authority is behind a, an agreement when you sign on with any of these guys. Um, so I don't know if it's cloud-based or, or not. The questions, I think, are pretty much the same. What should companies do to make consumers whole when a data breach happens? I mean, should they be offering credit monitoring, you know, help with, with you know, if, if they, there was an ID theft as, as, a, as a result of their, their information being stolen? What, what, should, what do they need to do? What's their responsibility besides just letting you know that it happened? Great question. I believe the, the, uh, the company that had the breach occur should do everything they possibly can to make sure the consumer doesn't have uh, anything negative happened to them. And I know Sony has offered credit reports and credit checks and um, trying to be helpful in that regard. And hopefully they will actually have some, some caseworkers of their own who, if, if this should happen to become a problem, where they can help tape, take some of the burden off of people uh, in man hours. You know, people are working 40, 60 hour work weeks and now you're spending 10, 10 hours that week trying to, to create, a, you know, clean up some mess. Perhaps Sony could and others could offer help in that regard the way, the way I've outlined my caseworkers do. Uh, Congresswoman, did you learn anything from the Secret Service yesterday? <laughs> it's, I did, but a secret, no. <laughs> <laughs> Had to. Um, of course, you know, and what's interesting, and e even I as, as the chairman of the committee, and the, the different jurisdictional aspects of when would it be FBI, when is it Secret Service, the level of involvement, and and you know to recognize too that this this is one area of cybersecurity that is important but this really can go on to a matter of national security and to recognize all of the layers and the entities that are that are involved so trying to get those answers from secret service uh, i think were the most helpful for us not that i clearly understood what what he was saying about all of uh, when you would talk to one and one you know the other but uh, you can tell there are a lot of very serious, very capable, and very good people who are focused on this issue, and the Secret Service clearly made that known. So on the flip side, on the criminal side, are the penalties strong enough right now as they exist for hackers? And if they're from out of this country, what do we do? Well, I don't know that I have that answer. Uh, and, and this is a worldwide issue, and the hackers are oftentimes, as we know, from out of our country. and. Uh, I think it is something that we should explore to deter people from, uh, from, from just being hackers. It's interesting because sometimes these folks are just doing it for the malicious side of it because they're, they can, because they're brilliant. It's, I think when, you, when you're out there in the world saying, hey, we've created such a great system that nobody could hack into, you're inviting other brilliant minds to say, hmm, let's test that and see if it's right. 
but so there have to be uh, deterrence from people doing it, and they have to be tough and severe because it's happening more and more and more. What did you think of Sony's argument that this happened because that they were challenging uh, illegal um, copyright laws? Sony has not. He, they have intimated that might be what why that Anonymous has, has done this, and and I don't know, and they can speculate that, but they haven't proven it yet. I think Sony's effort there is to play the victim and to say, hey, we're the victims of some other bad guy. And, and I think it is important to remember that, that there is somebody out there who has decided to target Sony and who has decided to do that. So there are the two sides to this, the hacker hacking Sony and then Sony protecting the data or the sort of the recklessness with which they might have held the data. Um, but Sony contending that it was this, this group that is going after them because they, they had a, a, a lawsuit based upon intellectual pro pro property protection. I think the point is to put out there in the consciousness that they are the victim too. So, but they have to still prove that point. Do you anticipate more hearings and do you think Sony or Epsilon or any of these other companies will show up? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, do. Can you compel them? I mean, I don't know if you guys have subpoena power. Or uh, we, we could if we wanted it, but at this point, Sony and Epsilon have not indicated they would not cooperate uh, further. So if I believe that if we asked Sony back or Epsilon, I believe that they would come. And it is, it's my intention to stay on top of the issue and to stay engaged and to read uh, and, and to really be focused on it at the point of calling Sony and Epsilon back. We'll see. But neither one has said absolutely not, no way, no how. The US, U.S. does not have a single agency in charge of data protection like Europe. Is it time? I, I don't know. And again, I would probably defer some of that to a uh, Judiciary Committee or another that, or, or even Homeland Security because the issues are varied and they are different. And I think just by that nature, I would think that we would have them compartmentalized a little bit more. But I haven't delved into it enough to know. But again, recognizing when you look at some of the cyber attacks, uh, elsewhere around the world, they were not, uh, uh, you know, based upon necessarily what the Sony breach was based upon, but sometimes they are actually uh, security related. So just by that nature, I would think that you would keep those separate. We have time for one more question. Juliana Grunewald. Uh, another issue that I know you've been active on is internet governance, and you've expressed concern about the United Nations getting in, you know, wanting to take over some functions of managing the internet. And I believe you had a resolution you introduced earlier this year on that issue. Can you just talk about what your interest is, you know, sort of how you got in, interested in that issue and what your concerns are? Sure. I think that we as Americans right now must take great satisfaction in watching around the world as people start expressing their voices and pleading for democracy. And so often now we're hearing that is coming because of their efforts on Twitter and on Facebook and whatever social networking they may use. And I think it is in our best interest that we continue to uh, support the internet as a, a ground up based platform where the people are the voices. Uh, I have a fear of the United Nations being a regulatory body that has the, the right to say anything about the Internet. And um, what our resolution was doing was expressing that the United Nations should not be involved in, in regulating the Internet. To me, the thought is just very frightening. Representative Mary Bono Mack is in her eighth term in Congress. She represents the Palm Springs area of California. And she is the chairman of the Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Commerce, Manufacturing, and Trade. Thank you for being on The Communicators. Juliana Grunewald has been our guest reporter.